Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here in person. Those of you joining us online, we really appreciate and value each and every one of you and love your smiling faces when we're recording this. Um, I wanted to say Happy New Year to everybody. It's our first official Yay. video of 2020. Yep. Yes. And 2020 is the year of what? Good vision, 2020. 2020, get it? And, uh, and there's a lot of great things, I'm sure, that are going to be in store for 2020. Uh, and so it's one of the things we wanted to talk about today because a lot of you are probably thinking about what you want in the new year. What do you want to create? What do you want your new year to look like? I was talking to somebody and they said every year they like to think of one word that will represent what they want that year to be. And I thought that's kind of a clever way to set a goal. I usually set one personal thing that I want to change and improve on each year but I liked that with one, one word. word. I was thinking you can make even one to three words. If you're a person who needs little phrases, one to three words. Think about what you want for the next year. But one of the most important things with getting what you want out of the year is really figuring out what stops you from getting what you want. Because a lot right. of times people will think, I hear so frequently, I didn't hear it as much this year, which I'm really happy about, but sometimes people will say, oh, this last year, I'm glad it's finally over. There was just it was just a bad year and finally I've got new hope with a new year and so I think I was the only one that was saying that lately. <laughs> you, you did have a pretty rough <laughs> December <laughs> procedures surgeries a lot of stuff made a lot of needles. the end of it a little little rough but yeah. um but if you're somebody that finds yourself frequently saying Oh, that year, I'm finally, it was, it was, yeah, finally it was, it was over. So now, hard. Open the new so year. Rough. Figure out what's stopping you in those making, years. Yes, yeah. making it a great year. Making, making it that the year, year you want. That year a good year, not the one that's going to be coming up because it hasn't happened yet. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so a good way to look at that is figuring out what stops you. And as we were talking, it seems that a lot of people are stopped they stop themselves from getting what they want in life or they stop themselves from doing what they want in life because of the fear of emotional pain right. that could come from taking the risk well, of going forward. Well, yeah, well, because everybody knows basically most of the time pain, so there's two basic types of pain, of course. You've got physical pain and then the emotional pain. And I think pretty much everybody agrees emotional pain is the one that actually hurts the most, right? Physical pain, you can go, oh yeah, it hurts there. And you can see it. And you can you see can it and you it. know it. Yeah, and you can, and it's actually, that's what I think more people as a general think of as the more consistent. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the pain. That's the stuff that actually hurts. But then the stuff when it's an emotional pain, that's the stuff I think we actually have a tendency to run from. Those right. are the things that we will actually go out of our way to not ourselves in the situation where it might happen won't say things because it might happen right I mean all of the things that we pull back from those ideas simply because there might be emotional pain exactly like for one example I, we've, I've talked to some people who say oh they'd love to go on a date with this person but there's no way they could possibly ask them because right. what if they say no right the fear of the, the emotional, emotional pain, pain of it they said no or the fear of the embarrassment of yeah, the um, emotional pain yeah, because of yeah. saying no. Well, and I think because we're so hard on ourselves, that's the other part. Is the I think the, not just it's not just the idea of the pain, but I think we're unrealistic in what we expect yes. to happen. Yeah. As a derogatory response to something that we do say of an interaction or something like that, you walk in and you want to say to someone, "Oh, da da da." da. And probably the worst thing they would probably go is, no, nah, I don't think so. But in your head, you get the, <laughs> right. no way. Right, kind of right. Yeah, so. And then another example of it at the holidays, there are a lot of holiday parties that go on. And some people get intimidated and they think, I'd like to go to that party, but what if nobody is there that I know? Or what if nobody talks to me? Or what right. if I feel really alone and I don't, I don't want to be in that situation? Yeah. I'm too scared because there's an emotional pain that goes with feeling like you're alone when you're in a group when of feel, crowded when you, group of people. When you people. start feeling isolated and alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that, that emotional pain of what if people don't talk to me? Yeah, yeah. What if I don't know what to do? What if, what if I, I don't know how to sit and how I to hold my hands? What if I stand out as this loner and everybody he goes, oh, who's that? Who's that freak? That's so. That's right. like what they're afraid back of. It comes to that same yeah, thing. You're yeah, afraid like, of people oh, laughing. They're gonna be like, who's that freak in the corner that's not talking to anybody? And, and people it's don't like, nobody do does that. that. They go, oh, that's sad. Someone's alone. 
And then another example would be somebody that wants to start a new business. This can happen a lot with people where people think, I've got this great idea, I want to start a new business, or I want to write a book, or you get an idea like that, mm, yep. and, but what if I fail? What if it doesn't make it? And yeah. then it's not even about, you know, all that you invest in it or the what could happen. It's, it's that or the energy. What if I fail and the emotional yeah, of the emotional I have this pain. great thing I yeah. wanted to do. Yeah. 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 Well, and even day-to-day -day stuff. I mean, like if, like, uh, like the stuff I do for you, there are times that I do stuff for you, and I, it actually, I get stressed about it because I have this fear that I'll do it wrong for you. I'll, mm -hmm. I have this fear that it's like, oh, I, because I didn't talk to you about it ahead of time or whatever, you know, and so I'll just do stuff. And then and when you're like, you come in and you go, did you do this? And I go, oh, man, and I'm like, Yes, <laughs> and it's but seriously, and then the yeah. idea that I might have done it wrong, yeah. just that emotional stress yeah. of that you might yeah. be like, that was so stupid. Oh. <laughs> but no, I mean you wouldn't, right. and that's my right. but that's but my that point. That's thing. that's that fear of it. Yeah. yeah, and so even that something as simple yeah. as that, or the I mean, it breaks down to that level. I mean, I don't think it people does, realize yeah. how many choices mm -hmm. every single day. I've talked to, yeah. That they change and those decisions are made solely on, well, this one, I might have something go wrong. Right. And if I do nothing. Then I know what I don't like. Then, it's, then it's not, yeah, well, then I don't have to do it. Then yeah. I, there's no risk. But then at the same time with no risk, there's no, no reward. reward. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's where, like, personally, I, I base my entire existence on the idea of, when it's like the last minute of my life. Like I know I'm dying, I'm sitting there, and I'm going over all of the stuff in my life, and I go, the worst thing that I can think of, the worst way I can think of to die, is to sit there and go, why did I not do those things? Mm -hmm. Why did I sit and just why did I let the fear take over? Why did I not have enough gumption? How, why did I not have enough desire to go out and do these things? Right. That would have made my entire, the, that little short life that we have here on this planet, that tiny little life that we have on this planet, on a day to day, it seems like it's really long. Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, especially like whatever age you are now, you look back to when you were like 10, the time it took you to get from 10 to now mm -hmm. is a blink of an eye. You know, even like everybody can understand that this life is so short and once it's gone, you don't get it back. And the older you get, the more you realize how short life is too. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially because it seems like time starts to actually speed up right. and go faster exactly. and faster and faster. <laughs> but when you're there and that's what, so when I'm there, I, I cannot imagine a worse thing to, to look back on and go, I wasted it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, that is absolutely, to say that you look back on your life and go, I didn't do everything I could in my life, Right, is just the worst thing in the world. Right. I remember Ann Landers wrote a letter, I think it was on her deathbed, she was realizing all of the things that she wished that she had done or that she felt she should have done, the things she wished she had enjoyed instead of saving, you know, I think one example was saving that little candle that looked like a rose because she did but it was too pretty to burn and, and she wished she had burned it. She, she wished that, she had seized the candle. risks in life and yeah. done the things, spoken to the people that she wanted to speak yeah. to that she was too afraid to speak to yeah. because she realized on her deathbed it's too late. And what if they said no? Who cares? What if but they she, didn't want to engage? But it's not the ones that did the fear is what if they what if they said no? And That's what if the they fear. Say yes. But the thing that we should focus on is what if it does happen? Right. What if it does what if work you out? Succeed? What if everything does turn around and your entire life is different mm -hmm. because of that one thing? Yeah, if you're in a job that you hate and you're surrounded by people that you don't like and you just feel like it kills you every single yeah. day, a lot of people are in that position. But to look for a new job is scary. To know, what do I even want to do with yeah. my life can yeah. be really scary. And there's yeah. a lot of security that comes with doing the same thing what and knowing what to doing. expect. Yep. And what if you change that 
yeah, that's possible. You might not like the next thing, but maybe you'll like the next thing after that. Oh my God. Or maybe you'll love it, and maybe you'll be surrounded yeah. by amazing people, and maybe yeah. you'll have an increase in your pay. Sometimes yeah. it might be worth it to go to a job that has a decrease in your pay, but you're happy, happy. every day. There's, there's so much to be said for being able to be happy every there's day. There's nothing more important than being happy. Absolutely. And, and the idea of... Again, if you're on that, the idea of if you take yourself to that last minute of your life, yes. and if you look back on your life and you think, why did I stay in that safe, calm, quiet, unthreatening, sad, but steady little world that I've created, and I never stepped outside of that, why would I do that? Right. Right. I know that was a huge turning point in my own life when I was, uh, gosh, somewhere Wait. between 12 and 15. <laughs> no, not That's there. still very young. Wow. So, somewhere okay. between 12 and 15. I was um, just done with the world. I, I had um, things that I was afraid of, and I felt like I had to be a certain way on the outside that I didn't feel like on the inside. And uh, there was just a lot that I felt was closing in on me in my world, and I was just ready to check out of this world. I had had it. I was done. I didn't feel like I could take the risks that I needed to take because I didn't realize what it was that I actually wanted. And so I tried to take myself out of this world. And again, the universe said no and brought me back despite me wanting to be in this world. And I realized, okay, so if all of the options are, if I, well, if I feel like I'm narrowed down to a single option, if you're getting depressed like that, you feel like you're narrowed down to a single option and the only way is out, then what if instead you look at the whole world as your options? Anything imaginable is an option because what is the what's the risk? What's the worst that can no, happen? Yeah, you have no risk. Exactly. The idea of quitting is still there tomorrow. Exactly. But what if changing what if you everything? Don't quit? and you change and you go after what you want and you figure out that the world really is your oyster and you can go out and know that yeah you might fall at times or you might have somebody disagree with you or something but that that's okay that you're taking a risk and if you're taking risks you're empowering yourself more than a lot of people right. even really empower yourself and in doing that in discovering that the whole world is full of choices and whatever choices I wanted to make they were open to me because what was the other option was, was out so yeah. I might as well try and explore everything yeah. and in doing that I found so much reward so much joy through so many risks and taking these big risks that were really big leaps of faith yeah. at times yeah. too and finding so much joy and that's a lesson I've carried through all of these decades later yeah. in my life yeah. where oh, yeah. I, I just, measure everything by well it is an option so everything is on the table look at everything think about what it, what you would feel if you do succeed yeah. think about yeah. how it would feel if you do try it you might yeah. find you only want to try it once for certain things yeah. but try but it try and it. then that's something else that you've experienced yeah. and then when you are eventually on your deathbed at an hopefully an older age. age you can look back at all of these amazing yeah. experiences I know there was a point that when living this life there was a reason to live it right I know when I was in college at um, I started college at full-time at 16 but I think I was 17 at this point and my psychology teacher had all of us write a paper it had to be at least 20 pages and smaller font about <laughs> your life and the things you had experienced and I know that some of the people in the class it was a night school class because I liked the older adults better than the younger kids <laughs> and so uh, a lot of them were kind of looking at me like wow I don't know if you'll have 20 pages at this age uh. you know I was thinking in my head at least <laughs> and so but who knows what they were right, really right, thinking. Of course. But, yeah. but then when I wrote the paper and then they, the teacher asked if he could share a lot of it with the class because he was surprised at the depth of all of the experiences yeah. that I had had at uh, yeah. 16, 17, I think it was 17. 17. And, uh, and so I told him, yes, they could share it. And it was really <coughs> eye-opening for a lot of the adults that were in their 40s of how much risk you can take in life and how you can get amazing res rewards 
because the risks that you take will equal rewards that open up. And you, to take those risks, you have to let go of the emotional fears. Yeah. You have to realize that the courage and the bravery that you have within yourself is going to bring so much joy when you just push that little fear down, push it out of you, and then... Well, and this is an emotional fear. The, the cool thing about, like, so when you get hurt physically, mm -hmm. the only way for it to heal is time. And right. I think we associate that with emotional pain. That if you get emotionally hurt, it just takes time to get over it. And I personally, from what I've seen from myself and most of our friends and the people I talk to, emotional pain is one of the few pains that actually when you go at it, when you face it and you charge at it, just taking it on actually diminishes that pain. The pain suddenly isn't this overwhelming thing. The pain isn't this something that hurts you so bad that you want to run from it. Mm -hmm. When you stand there and you face it and you take it on, all of a sudden that big huge pain just kind of, and it gets smaller and smaller mm -hmm. and suddenly it's not scary, it's not painful, and you can do it day after day and it's not a big deal. Yeah, and part of that is recognizing the strength that you have in you too. I think it's really being able to step back and look at the emotional pain for what it is because I think for some people that emotional pain makes it you feel like you're going to be swallowed up in it. Right. Like yes, they, if that's they get what they're hurt, running from. They feel like they yeah, like it looms over. Yeah. But if you do like you were saying if you just stop and you stare squarely at it yeah. instead of running from it, stare at it, look at it, think okay, this is what's hurting me. Does it actually have anything to do with me? Or does it have to do with somebody right. else's opinion? Or that I'm afraid of. Or something that I'm afraid of. I'm thinking if it's something that's already happened. Oh, I got you. you. Know? Okay, so you take enough. a right. risk. Oh, okay. And somebody does say no. Or you right. take a risk. Yep. And it doesn't have the result that you were okay. hoping it had. Okay. And so then you... that's going to happen. Right. That does sometimes happen. Absolutely. Sometimes you'll succeed. Absolutely. And sometimes you'll think, ooh, that's what I was afraid of. But, and don't get swallowed up by it. Just yeah. step back, look at it, and recognize the bravery and the courage yeah. that you have within yeah. yourself. I like to associate things with animals a lot. And so if really? you're working with uh, trying to bring strength up in yourself and you feel like you get hurt by something, Bear. then you're... And you could do bear. That could be one of them. I'm guessing. I'm just <laughs> and, uh, guessing where you're going. I was thinking tiger. Oh, okay. Oh, tiger. I like that better. Tiger, yeah, yeah. lion. Tiger, yeah. Those are great for bravery and strength. Maybe bear is something that you'll look for more. Whatever animal you resonate with that has a feeling of bravery and courage. And when you go through something, you take the risk and the risk, and you get the emotional pain yeah. because you realize, oh, yep, that's yep. what I was afraid of, yep. and it happened. Yeah. Stand up, and when you think about it literally physically stand up allow yourself to think about it instead of running from it you can yeah <laughs> and, uh, and imagine that you turn into the animal that represents strength to you nice. so imagine you become the lion maybe make your paws into the like claws and think about what it is that you know that hurt you in uh, yoga where there's a lot of animal poses you can oh, do yeah. the lion pose in yeah. yoga or you can do whatever animal bear pose or something and uh, and really stand in your strength right. know that the essence and the energy of that animal is the courage that wells up within you and because you faced it head on because you experienced the emotional pain and you brought it into yourself now it's become your strength now you're turning that wounding into your chiron which is your greatest healer your greatest teacher c-h-i-r-o-n if you're looking it up online okay. and uh, you're turning Google. it into <laughs> you're turning it into your greatest strength but really taking those physical poses will help you to get through it and to really feel the bravery of the moment and very often you're going to push past the emotional fear and you're going to succeed yeah. and then you're making all of these experiences that happened whether good or bad or in between maybe sometimes they're a little mixed feeling right. yeah. those are all experiences that when you are on your deathbed you can look back and you can go I tried I did I experienced I lived well, and I think, well, not just that, once you do that, you're going to notice all of a sudden this, this quiet, solitude, safe, secure little world that's usually boring and lame, mm -hmm. life that you're walking through has now become this much more energetic, much more alive. vibrant, alive life that you're living. You're yes. happy about it. I mean, even, even in the pain... That experience, that, that that expansion of your world, just I don't I think almost everybody in the world 
that expansion just mm -hmm. feels good. There's a charge of joy that, yeah, will, come that will lift through yeah, your and, life. Yeah, and it can change the direction of everything you've ever known. Exactly, because the more risks you take, the more opportunities will yeah. come in as well. Well, like me, with you, that's what, so with her, I don't know if you could realize that, yes, I have to jump through all kinds of things I would normally never, ever, 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 ever do. Um, being around her, like when I do the videos, when I did the ones by myself, oh my gosh. Um, scared to death, but it was part of the thing to get more, to be more, to you know, to expand my world. Things like that, scared to death. When we go out in front of groups, when we were doing uh, whole group conversations, and I'm just like, you know, dry throat, I shake it, and hi, how are you? And it's like, oh my god, but. You know, you get through it and it expands your world. It changes the direction of your life. Everything changes. And even the worst part of it was still better than not have ever done it. Yes, like with the videos, if you don't mind me sharing. The, yeah, no. Yeah. So, you mean how horrible uh, the first one was? No. So the, uh, the first time he agreed to do a video by himself, yeah. I think I was really sick at that you were, point. You were very sick. And I uh, felt like I was on my deathbed and couldn't speak. Yeah, and, you uh, were. You were and so, yeah. and so That's uh, what it takes to get her to not do one. Yes. And so, <laughs> so I remember the fear that you had. And you oh, were, my God. At first he charged ahead like, hey, I'm going to do this for oh, you. Do thought, yeah, it'd be oh, no big wonderful. deal. No big and the closer deal. the time came, it oh, was, oh. what? I say I would do and then when he did it you hope that you always succeed with things you hope that your fears aren't realized <laughs> and, and you hope it's not broadcast to, to the entire planet thousands of people <laughs> how horrible your screw up could be and so the first time it was a very very quick speaking a little hard to hear <laughs> but you did it though I made it. it I made it and then there's you know it was some so fast it was like a 30 minute video in like two and a half minutes. <laughs> and then the second time, it was several months later before you were willing to try it again, before you needed to try it again, when yep. you had another situation yep. where I was really grateful yep. that you did it. And, and sometimes when you have an emotional fear and you try to overcome it and you try to make sure you don't do it again, Swap. so you talk really slowly. <laughs> so the next <laughs> one was like a two and a half minute video that took me 30 minutes to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so the third time it the came third up, time. some people, some people would quit after that. Some people would say, "I can't do it. I tried." I'm a glutton for punishment. Though. Some people would say, "I'm never going to risk it again nope, because I was, was too embarrassed. Yeah, the whole world it was would have seen it." Yeah, well, they did. But instead, you worked through the emotional pain. You let go of the emotional pain. That was yeah. not going to hold you down. No. You were kind of come to the rescue Absolutely. and do another video for me yeah. on your own. Which well, I was you're more, for. you're more important than a little bit of embarrassment. And so. the third time. And the third time was pretty good. It was perfect. I don't know about that. It was but it was really, pretty good. Not the bad. Cadence, the voice, the topic, everything was wonderful. The cadence? I don't remember playing drums. <laughs> I play drums in it. And so the point with that is if you have a fear, and don't let it hold you back. Yeah. If you are afraid of the emotional consequence of something, face it. Stand on top of it. Bring yourself up, find the bravery within you, connect to whatever animal brings you courage, whatever animal brings you bravery, and imagine that you become that animal. Shape-shifting is one of the things we do in shamanism, but imagine you become that animal and you feel them inside you just before you're about to do what it is you're going to do. Maybe you're going to go meet a new group of people and you just, before you get out of your car to go inside, you feel that animal within you and think, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then as you go ahead and you go forth and, uh, and do it, know that sometimes it's going to work great. And if it doesn't work great, that's okay too, yeah. because that's an experience you had that you can build from yeah. and it won't kill you. And it's not something anybody's even going to remember yeah. in a year, yeah. most likely. Absolutely. I know the first time I went to a political party, I was um, trying to grab a strawberry dipped in chocolate. and as I stabbed it with my fork, it flung over and actually hit the politician who was running for office. And, uh, and so I was pretty embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? Like Most people a year later probably wouldn't remember who that person was that did no, that. No, I might remember They might that. remember the experience for that one. But, uh, but the point is, 
you make it through. Yes, and absolutely. What were you going to say? I was going to say, and that's, and it doesn't all, and these don't have to be big things. That's where when you start out, these don't have to be big things. So, like I said, in our day-to-day -day life, there mm -hmm. are many, many decisions we make every single day. That if you take a minute and you look at it, mm -hmm. you realize there are certain things we make these decisions simply based on the fear of what might happen. Find those little ones. Start with some of the little ones. Start with your day-to-day -day ones. Go through your day, and there's something that there, there will be something, if it's not in a day, within one week's period, I guarantee you there's something that you go, I would do that, but no. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and you don't even, and probably it's a habit for you to say no. So you may, you may have to look mm -hmm. pretty hard. Maybe because every time it's you just, start to say no, think about why well, That's what I'm saying. It's no. so habit that you don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. It's not even a, should I? It's a, I always do this one thing. And so you, probably, you may have to actually dive in. Why do I always drive this way to the store? Why is it I always only go to this restaurant when I want the food? Why is yeah. it that I... These things that we've taught ourselves how to not even interact with the things that make us uncomfortable. So yeah, you may have to dive a little deep to find them. But find some of the little ones and then go at them. Find out what they are and go at those things that make you right. afraid. And start with the little ones. And when they go well, which most of them will go well, when they go well, find one a little bigger. Find one a little bigger. Find one a little bigger. And the next thing you know, you're on a completely different life course mm -hmm. than you had drilled yourself into at that point in time. What are some little examples you could think of for day to day? That's what I was trying to so do. Uh, when... Maybe if there's a new grocery store you're thinking about trying, but you're not you sure if you want to go yeah. there because you're used to maybe it or, or well or there's that or there's okay like I said with you like when you there are things that I would was thinking about doing for you or that you have asked me to do mm -hmm. and I just kind of go no I'm not going to do them because I'm afraid of what the outcome might be. Mm -hmm. I mean things like that could be a real simple one right out the gate like mm -hmm. things that because this is where it usually starts. Right. Um, at least that's easiest for me to come up mm -hmm. with. Um, but then there's the, I mean, like the the restaurant you stopped going to because something happened in the past. Mm -hmm. um, the grocery store, the person that, or the people that you never talked to in the grocery store mm -hmm. because you're afraid of what conversation might happen or if you're not comfortable talking to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's... Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. the ones I can come up with yeah. off the top of my head. I yeah. hadn't really thought of any. Yeah, maybe somebody has um, some physical challenges or something and they want to start walking, but maybe they're afraid of not being able to make it all the way. I'm not sure why this popped in my head, but not being able to make it all the way to where they want their destination. It starts slow with things sometimes. Yeah. So start where you're just walking up the street and back and then work up to the corner and back and then walk around the whole block, yeah. you yeah. know? And but just challenge start small sometimes, start small sometimes. sometimes. yeah yeah and that can work with some of the resolutions people make too like yeah. one of the top resolutions people make is getting fit so maybe you're afraid of failing at your goal but you aren't sure where to start uh -huh. so you and start with these big plans and maybe you need to work your way up, up to, to it start with a small exercise 10 minutes every day at your house yeah. and then work up to the point where you get bored of working out at your house so then you get the gym membership yeah. and you start going yeah. every other day to the gym and the opposite days 10 minutes at home or yeah. something so and that way yeah mm -hmm. going after what you're afraid of failing at Yes, exactly, which, which whatever is, that is. Whatever that is. And that's exa that's a really good example of something that I think a lot of people, they say, well, I meant to do it, but I wasn't, da 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 And I think a lot of the times is they're afraid that they'll fail at it. Yeah. I think that's great, yeah. Making sure that the what-ifs and the fear of emotional pain that woo, may have you, uh, that you're not allowing those to have you completely checking out of your life. Because yeah. sometimes that will have you literally checking out of your life, losing out on the experiences you can have, knowing that the risk you put into life equals words that you get it's out a, of life. There's a direct correlation, no question. And the risks that you put into 2020 will be the rewards that you get out of 2020. Yep. Whatever word you're thinking of for this year that you want to make happen, maybe one to three words that you're wanting as your theme for this year that you want to make happen, think of how you're going to make that happen each month. 
Think about how what fears you have. You could even do this as a 12-step program, not associated with the 12-step oh, program, I'm like, um, for the year. How did Thinking we get about there? 12 fears that you have or 12 concerns, 12 things you'd like to create in your life or bring oh. in that oh. you haven't yet. Maybe it's socially, maybe it's personally, but each yeah. month write down now what one you want for each month and then each month tackle that one, one. fear yeah. and think about how great yeah. you'll feel in yeah. December when you tackle 12 fears and push through and found such yeah. strength and, and such I mean, bravery. And even if you only accomplish moving forwards on a, few a, of them. a handful of them would change your whole everything. Absolutely. Yeah, that's and pretty good. And just starting with things that affect you on a day-to-day -day level. I like that. That's pretty good. Nice. I like that. <laughs> well, I think that we will wrap up on okay. that note. And I hope you all really make 2020 the year that you want it to be really embrace what uh, the ideas that were brought out today and go ahead if you have a calendar mark those 12 things on your calendar now so that you can think of down the road in the future each time you turn the month on your calendar you're going to see clear away the fear of whatever, whatever. the emotional thing nice. is and allow yourself to move forward allow yourself to make 2020 a year that where your vision and your yeah. dream <laughs> happens where you're creating it you're standing in your power yeah. think about what animal brings you bravery yeah. brings you and courage just, and go after that man. go for if it you're, if you're afraid of the pain of the emotional fear you are hiding from an amazing life and it just right. isn't worth it and what happens if you don't go after it right. you know what happens if you don't go after it so what do happens if you do yeah. go your for entire it. world can be different and we'd love to have you share on our yeah, yeah. facebook page what you're planning on or just or out. share or just share something that you think of as an emotional pain that you're afraid of just things that yeah. you were personally afraid of that you wouldn't be mind, you wouldn't mind sharing it sometimes, would be so amazing to learn from people sometimes simply writing it down simply naming it getting it out there is the first, first step, step to clearing Absolutely. it and letting it go so um we hope you have enjoyed our first live talk of the new year 2020 Reverend J.J. Roth, I'm Reverend Angela Roth, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the like button on our Facebook page, and we will see you next week.